Well, by now you've probably been accustomed to seeing Linda and I just kind of hanging around in the garage and in the driveway doing videos on car repair and getting ready to go on a trip. Well, our weather here in, the, in uh, Montana, this is the third week of January, it's warmed up into the 40s. So we decided to skip out on a camping trip. We made it out to an area called Dry Wolf in central Montana. It's kind of down low, so there's not too much snow. Not too much snow and uh, it's a beautiful area. So main thing we got to do is set up camp, find some firewood, and uh, settle in. We're going to be here for a couple of days. I need to bring the saw so I don't have to drag that whole tree back. I thought you'd just pick up this great big thing and pull it back. I know. <sighs> this will make good fire when it's real dry. Bears are supposed to be in hibernation, but it's too warm. They could be out. So we've got bears black, and black bear and grizzlies. Black bear and grizzly here. We got mountain lions and wolves. All the fun stuff. Well, we can go back and get a fire going with what we've got, and then we can come out and get some more. Yeah. Cool. You gonna come back and get this other piece, or should I drag it in? That one? Yeah. Um. We can drag it now. If you hold the saw, I can drag both. No, I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it. Okay, let's go.
Yeah, and uh, you stick it down and put the panels on it, the wing panels. Just put the wing panels on there. Too. That's a, no, that's frozen ground. <laughs> I think so, yeah. Well, be careful uh, walking around the tent because these are going to be sticking up. So it's been below zero here for <laughs> the last two or three weeks. So everything's, the ground's really solid frozen. That's why I didn't bring along my metal detector. <laughs> Okay. Good. Okay, I want to show you something. This is a Montana campsite in the National Forest. Let's look for trash. We haven't done any cleaning or anything. I see one uh, tip of my finger, there's an aluminum can right there that's kind of burnt, but that's about it. Yeah, show how long this has been a campsite. I mean... Yeah, this has been a campsite for a long time. What do you got there, Linda? What are you showing them? Well, the bench that has grown into the uh, tree. This is how long it's been a campsite. <laughs> No trash at all. I like, this is nice. I like to see this, but, you know, this is kind of remote out here. It's, I mean, you know, it's probably 10 miles of road getting in here, but I guarantee you that in the summertime, spring and summer and hunting season, this place is packed. Now, the only piece of trash that I see is somebody dropped their chapstick over there where, by where our car is at. And that's the only piece of trash I see on the ground here. Too good. That's really good. Some apples and cheese and dried salami. Then we'll have coffee afterwards. And cake. Ooh. <laughs> Linda made a Hershey's scratch cake the other day, and man, is it good. I wish you could have some. I'd share her, her portion. <laughs> <laughs> Some women wear precious jewels at the end of their fancy necklace. I have a knife. I love this knife. Our favorite cheap coffee. It's actually really good coffee. I do have a knife. Necklace, though. We do. Very nice, Linda. Ready for coffee? Oh, yeah. 
wait, that's not my car. <laughs> How's your coffee, Linda? Mmm, it's good. Oh no. Yeah, mine too, nice and hot. But I tell you, when you're out here and it's chilly, you gotta have an insulated cup of some kind. <laughs> this one's a Hydro Flask, uh, 18 ounce Hydro Flask. I've been carrying this for years. I love it because I can close the top and then a couple hours from now, I mean if I don't want to drink it all now, a couple hours from now or four or five hours from now, it's still pretty hot. Can't beat that. I've been carrying this around for a long time. Almost flipped me over. <laughs> So during the summer, this is a uh, creek, a river, creek, creek. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, I forgot the name of this creek that runs down through here. You people from Hawaii, you don't know how to say creek. Creek. <laughs> <laughs> If you're wearing Gore-Tex boots, never put them up by the fire like this and uh, warm your feet. By the time your feet feel the warmth from the fire, the Gore-Tex is ruined. I've done that to two pair of boots already. And these are Gore-Tex boots. I just put my feet up here for a second to show you. <laughs> I'm getting them down. Yeah, by the time your feet feel the warmth, the Gore-Tex has gotten too hot and it's destroyed. Even though the rest of your boot seems all right, it's just... The next time you step in water, you'll be in water. That's right. Well, I just got up, got out of bed, 
Linda's still sleeping. I got the trailer heating up. Got to make it nice and warm for her. <laughs> It'll get nice and toasty in there. It's just above freezing this morning. The area we're in is kind of shaded from or sheltered from the wind, but it's also shaded from the sun here, so it'll be a while before the sun hits this campsite. But I was going to get a fire started and get some coffee on. Get the day going. This particular little gasifier stove puts a lot of heat on the bottom of that pan in a hurry. It's pretty nice. This replaced a uh, one that I didn't like. This one works very well. I'll put a link to it in the bottom of the video. It's also really easy to feed. Oh, it was nice and cozy in the trailer here last night, though. We left the heat on all night, just down on low. And it keeps it warm enough. Then in the morning, I get up and just turn the heat up a bit and plug the fan in, and it warms up in here pretty fast. It's only 6 by 10, so it can't take very long, right? But it's been pretty nice. You know, this morning I woke up and... I got up and I was looking out the winter window of the trailer and looking at all this beauty here and you know what I was thinking about? How the Beatles ruined my life. <laughs> yeah, that crossed my mind this morning for some reason. But it's true. When I was uh, 13, 14 years old, I was living down in the Sunnyvale area of California and talking 1963, 64. You know what was big back then? Surfing. And even at that age, I was skipping school and hitchhiking to Santa Cruz to go surfing. <laughs> Remember the Beach Boys and Jan and Dean and all that surf music? Well, that was my life back then. Man, I loved that. Loved hanging out in Santa Cruz and watching the waves come in and listening to the music. And you know, I was, I couldn't drive yet. But I knew that there was a woody wagon with a 409 in it. You know, a four speed dual quad pause attraction 409? Yeah, one of those was in my future. Then the Beatles invaded. And it all went away in a flash. Poof. Even the Beach Boys stopped doing surf music. <laughs> and I loved it. You know, I was right there, you know, going to hanging out at the drive-in, local drive-in on Friday nights. And, you know, I just, I just loved it. Loved the whole thing. But I remember going into my English class one morning. There was a girl in my class and... I sat down on my desk before class started and she was crying. I looked over and she was just sitting across from me. I says, why are you crying? And you know what she told me? She says, Paul got married. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't tell her what I was thinking. I was too nice. <laughs> she was crying because Paul got married. Yeah, the Beatles ruined my life. <laughs> Thank goodness the Stones came along. <laughs> and Eric Burden and the Animals. At least we had decent music. I mean, I'm not saying the Beatles were decent music. It was great music. I just didn't relate to it at all. Not at all. Loved Canned Heat, Cream. But I never forgave them for that. So I refused to buy their albums. <laughs> yeah, and to this very day, I never cared for them too much. 
probably losing half of my subscribers just saying this. <laughs> yeah, but it's the way things go. Hey, what a pretty day it is. Finally got some sunshine. We were in our campsite still in the shade across the road. But it's pretty here, isn't it? We had a choice last night of either being out of the wind or out of the sun, and we chose to be out of the wind. It's kind of sheltered back in there. Well, there's no other crazy people around out camping this time of year, but it kind of turned out kind of nice this weekend. Boy, the wind can sure ruin it though. <clears throat> I used to be a commercial pilot, flew small aircraft for FedEx, and every morning I'd have to be up on the flight line, out on the flight line at 6 a.m. And it didn't matter if it was 20 below, 30 below, you had to be out there and you had to watch them load your aircraft. You had to, you had to be there, just standing there watching. You know what the worst weather was? It wasn't 20 below, 30 below. It was 40 degrees and blowing 20. That was the worst. Because it's not cold enough to where the moisture is frozen in the air. So it's that damp cold, 40 blowing 20, 20 miles an hour wind. That was the most miserable you could be out on the flight line. So today's not so bad. Hey, thanks for coming along. We're gonna go ahead and end this video right here. And uh, we hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do the usual like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you around.